All right, let's look now at conservative and non-conservative forces. So these are basically two classes of forces, conservative and non-conservative. And a conservative force is simply a force that conserves energy. And that's why we call it a conservative force, because it conserves energy. Uh, that is that the amount of work done by the force uh, changes the energy by the same amount. So if I have a force that acts on an object, it changes, it does a certain amount of work on the object, it's going to change the energy of that object by the same amount. So a great example of a conservative force, and there aren't that many truly conservative forces, but a great example is the gravitational force. Basically, anytime you have a field force, that is going to be a conservative force. So electric forces are also conservative. Uh, and the reason is uh, because Whenever you have objects that come into contact with one another, they lose energy due to dissipative forces such as friction. Uh, so non-conservative forces do not conserve energy. Hence, non-conservative. And as I've already said, that uh, friction is a good example of a non-conservative force. So friction can act on an object over a certain distance. Right? it will do a certain amount of work on an object, but it will not change the energy of that object by that same amount. Because a certain amount of that energy is lost due to thermal energy, heat, uh, sound, deformation of the material. All right, so the work done by conservative forces as a result of this is path independent. I'll show you an example of this in just a second. Path independent. And the work done by conservative forces is path dependent. So for example, let's say that I'm, I have a guy that, that jumps from right here. He jumps and he follows that path. And then a, an exactly the same guy that slides down a slide. Now in this case, we have two forces at work. Actually, in both cases, we have the gravitational force at work, at work. But in the slide case, we also have the force due to friction. So uh, even though the path for the diver and the slider are different, the work done by gravity is still the same because they're both starting here at y naught equals zero and gravity is acting over a distance y gravity uh, acts in the downward direction and so the work done by gravity is equal to the force weight times the change in the y displacement however the two people do not have the same energy right because the second guy also has a frictional forces acting upon him and so that's taking away energy now the frictional force is actually dependent upon the path so you know the let's say that the length of this slide is d then the work done by the frictional force is going to be fk times d however let's say that uh the slide is a different shape slide has a bunch of bumps in it. In this case, let's say that the length of the slide is three times the original length of the slide because of all these bumps. Then the work done by the frictional force is going to equal the frictional force times 3d. And so in that way, I change the path, even though I'm starting at the same and ending at the same points, uh, the work has been increased because the path has increased. However, notice that with the gravitational force that it doesn't matter the path that I take. The gravitational force being a conservative force is path independent. Right? So those are two broad categories of forces, uh, but very important. Now, it becomes important because as we move into gravitational potential energy here, this is uh, the energy due to the gravitational force, the work done by the gravitational force. And so because the gravitational force is a conservative force, and because conservative forces are path independent, my gravitational potential energy, I'll find, is dependent up only upon the change in height and not on the path that I take to get there. All right, so the gravitational potential energy is the energy describing the object's potential to do work or have motion. As uh, we said before, there are several different types of potential energy, chemical, electrical, elastic, et cetera. And we'll get to elastic later in this chapter. Uh, but right now, we'll look at gravitational potential energy.
So if you lift an object a certain distance, you do work. Okay. So I apply a force in this direction. I move it through a change in position. I'm going to call this delta y because it's in the vertical direction. Um, I do a certain amount of work. And that work that I do, this is the force that I apply. This is what your hand applies or you have a rope attached to it or whatever. I apply a force and I change it to the position by a certain position y. So I have that work F times y. And this is equal to, because the force that I apply is equal to the weight of the object, mg times y. Now, because of your work then, I've done this certain amount of work, and because of the work energy theorem, if I do work on an object, I've increased its energy. But here, I haven't increased its kinetic energy. I've actually increased its potential energy. All right, so I move it to a certain position, and then I increase its energy. So now its new potential energy is equal to this work that I've done, mg times the change in y. I'm going to call this mgh. So the gravitational potential energy is equal to the weight of the object times the height that you move it. So here I'm letting this distance be h. And that's our gravitational potential energy.